Hello everyone, this is the second lecture in the seventh module and in this module we are discussing second order reliability methods and under this topic we have two different models. One we have already discussed in the last class that is Breitung's model. In this lecture we are going to discuss Waits model. But before we do that, let us quickly go through the previous model that is Breitung's approximation that we studied in the last class. Now, the expression you can see on your screen is what proposed by Breitung. Now, if you carefully look at this expression, it is a correction over the first order reliability method that uh, we already developed the model and solved some problems. So, the phi of minus beta in this expression is the first order approximation. Then once we estimate phi of minus beta from the first order reliability method using Lagrange multiplier technique, we have the most probable point of failure. So, at this MPP, our task is to evaluate the principal curvature that is denoted by this kappa j. Now, once we have this principal curvature, then we can evaluate this correction over the first order reliability method and together these two actually gives us the estimation of probability of failure for the nonlinear limit state. Now, in this formulation, we again use Taylor series expansion, but in this case, we considered up to second order term in the Taylor series expansion. However, in the first order reliability method, we went up to the first order term. That means, in the first order reliability approximation, we used a linearization of the limit state. However, in this case, we consider the second order term. Now, once we estimate probability of failure, then from that we can estimate reliability index. For that again, we take phi inverse of PF2, obviously it will come with a negative sign because phi of minus beta is the probability of failure. So, once we do that, we have the exact estimation of reliability index as per Breitung's model. Now, in this model again, there are some approximations and limitations that you can see on your screen. The two major limitations of this proposal is that it uses parabolic approximation and in this approximation of the limit state, it does not consider all the mixed terms and their derivatives in the Taylor series expansion. So, the second order derivative that we consider in this model, it does not consider the mixed terms. So, there we have an approximation and the second one is that Breitung used asymptotic approximation to evaluate multivariate standard normal PDF. Now, this asymptotic formula is accurate only for large beta and if the beta is low, obviously the SOM estimate is inaccurate. Now, to address these issues, there are various other models exist in the market. So, if you go through the literature, there are different proposals available and out of that, just two of them are shown here. For example, Der Karigian et al. in 1987 developed a proposal where they approximated the limit state by two semi parabolas and they went for a curve fitting technique where they used discrete points uh, and then uh, using this curve fitting technique, they evaluated the curvature. Now, this strategy helps to avoid the computation of a full second derivative in the Hessian matrix. So, it is in a way efficient and at the same time because it considers a curve fitting technique. So, it is a better approximation than the proposal by Brighton. Then comes Wade's proposal. I believe I pronounced this name correctly. Uh, so, this Waits proposal came in 1990 and he also developed 
two alternative sum formulations. Now, in this case also again, he used parabolic and general second order approximations and based on that, uh, he developed some corrections and without using any asymptotic approximation. So, that is how Wett's proposal was published in 1990 that we are going to discuss today. But before we go to Wett's proposal, let us quickly solve some MATLAB problem and go through the code how we can implement Breitung's model in the first order reliability code that we developed earlier. So, let us first quickly go through the algorithm and then we will see how the MATLAB code is developed and we will solve the problem that we studied in our last lecture. Okay. So, what you can see on your screen is how the Breitung's proposal works. So, it mainly have three steps. Obviously, its starting point is the solution obtained from first order reliability method. So, once you solve first order reliability method, then the first step is where we construct R0 matrix. This R0 matrix you can see on your screen. Here, it is developed using the direction cosines we evaluate from the first order reliability method. And then once we have this R0 matrix, we use Gram's mead orthogonalization to construct the rotational matrix R. Now, once we have this rotational matrix R, then we construct A matrix and the element of the A matrix you can see on your screen. In this A matrix, we have another matrix capital D which comes from the second derivative of the limit state. Now, once we evaluate A matrix, then we reduce the order. So, if it is a n cross n matrix, we reduce it to n minus 1 cross n minus 1 and then evaluate eigenvalues to compute the principal curvature kappa j. Then once we do that, in the final step, we actually evaluate the correction due to this curvature and then that we apply over the first order reliability estimation to get the probability of failure as per Breitung's model. So, that is the algorithm and then finally, we estimate also reliability index from this probability of failure. So, in this case, we first evaluate the probability of failure and then from that, we get the reliability index. Now, we solve some problems. So, this is one of the problem we solve. So, you can see it is the same cantilever beam and the limit state is Fyz minus m and the random variables are Fy and z. So, this problem we have solved. So, in the MATLAB code, here you can see this GSC function. This is the limit state function. Out of that, this eighth limit state is where we have this problem statement. So, we have x1 times x2 minus m in this case is 1140. This problem is taken from Haldar Mohadevan's book. And so, the limit state is x1 times x2 minus 1140. Now, we have a main code where we set this uh, number. So, in this case, the limit state number is 8. So, we set this number to 8. Then, eighth problem actually solves this cantilever beam and here we have first defined the CX matrix and then the properties of the random variable. And then we have a first order reliability code which is here. So, it first solves the first order problem and because it has a non-normal distributions, it also asks for equivalent normalization. So, in this EQ norm you are familiar with. So, with all uh, these subcodes we discussed earlier. Now, it also has a 
correlation and therefore we do an eigen analysis to decouple it and then we invoke equivalent linearization. So that's how the first order reliability problem goes and once it solves then finally it asks for the Breitung's correction. So in this SOM new code we have the Breitung's formulation implemented. So in this SOM new function file you can see we have beta nu that is the estimate we get from the first order reliability analysis. Then gz its differential and then uh, the z vector and the z star where we estimate the uh, different parameters of this writing's proposal. Obviously, our first task if we go to the algorithm now, our first task is to construct this R0 matrix. Now, in this R0 matrix, basically what we have is a diagonal element 1 up to the n minus 1 position and then the final row of this matrix is developed using the direction cosines that we get from first order reliability method that means alpha. So you can see R0 end comma all that means last row is where we have the direction cosines. So that is how the R matrix is created, sorry R0 and from there we apply Gram's mid orthogonalization and here is the construction of R matrix from R0. So finally at the end of this for loop we get R matrix that is the rotational matrix if you recall we rotate the Z axis so that the final variable coincides with the beta direction of beta. Now once we have this, our next task is to construct D matrix. So here you have D matrix which we get by differentiating GZ twice and then uh, evaluate this D matrix at Z star point. So D matrix is first evaluated and then we construct A matrix whose expression you can see on your screen. So this is the expression for a matrix, all the elements of A matrix Aij are given and that is what we calculate here in this A matrix. Then once we have it, we go for Eigen analysis of A. That gives us principal curvature kappa. So this is the principal curvature and once we have it, then we first estimate the correction over first order reliability method. So this correction we multiply with the first order reliability estimation that we already get from the beta estimated from form and that is how we estimate basically the second order reliability. And once we have it then from this we can estimate the reliability index. So for this problem let us run this code. So let me first open this table so that we can compare. So now the iteration continues. So we have the result now. So what we get from the first order reliability analysis, you can see on your screen we have final values of direction cosines and the design point. So the design point you can see on your screen, Fy is 24.539 and Z is 46.539. 457 that is what we get from the first order reliability analysis. Corresponding alpha that is the direction cosine we have alpha 1 is minus 0 0.836 and alpha 2 is minus 0 0.548 that is what we get from first order. 
Once we have that, again, we need to construct R0 and then finally R. So you can see the R matrix here. Then D matrix that is obtained from the second derivative of G with respect to Z. And then finally, once we have this R and D, we can construct A matrix. And once we have this A matrix, we can do the Eigen analysis and estimate the correction. And then finally, we get the probability of failure as per Breitung's model. So, if we see the table, here you have, so Breitung's proposal gives us a beta of 5.0712. So, that's what we have here. And the corresponding probability of failure is 1.9768 into 10 to the power minus 7. So, what you can see in this table. So, that's how the problem was solved in case of cantilever beam. So, this is the first problem. Let us consider one more problem. And actually, this is the problem we very often encounter in structural engineering. So, in this problem, we have a rectangular cross section of a reinforced concrete beam and the GX you can see on your screen. Now, again, for that, we define the limit state in the limit state function. So, problem number 6 is where we have this limit state defined. Now, we have altogether three random variables in this case. Applied moment, then XU and FSC. So, problem number 6 is where we have this limit state. So, let us change first the ID of the problem. So, here we have 6. So, in the sixth problem, if we go, here it is. So, first we have defined the properties of random variable and then we invoke form some code. So, first again it solves beta from linear approximation and then once it is done, we come to this second order reliability method. So, let us run this code and then see how the result comes. So, it has converged. Let us see the result. So, beta from the first order reliability method is 4.2823. So, in this case, we get 4.2823. And corresponding alpha values, if you look at, So, we have here alpha is 0 0.6798. So, that is the first alpha. Second one is minus 0 0.3048 and the third one is minus 0 0.6671. So, once we have alpha, again we first estimate R0 matrix and then from R0 matrix, we get this R matrix. The values of R matrix you can see on your screen. Then we estimate D matrix from the second derivative of the limit state in the standard normal space. And then finally, we construct A matrix from where we estimate principal curvature. And based on that, uh, we find out Breitung's uh, reliability index and the probability of failure. So, here is the result. So, first order reliability gives an estimation of 4.2823. So, here you can see and the respective probability of failure is 9.3127 in 10 to the power minus 6. So, that is how the Breitung's model is implemented in MATLAB. Now, with that uh, review of MATLAB code, let us come back to today's discussion on a second model proposed by Now, in this proposal, what we have, again, a second order approximation of the failure surface. So, this expression on your screen for the second order approximation, you know how to derive it by now. So, we transform the coordinate 
here this y represents the standard normal space uh, in some of the literatures instead of z they use y so that's why uh, i thought to keep this also just to introduce you that sometimes we use y also for uh, standard normal uh, variate now the details of this model you can see in this article so what it says that the failure can be again evaluated using this uh, integral where uh, the domain is defined by this second order approximation and then basically this weights proposal it has derived a three term approximation so the detailed derivation for this model will not go through but those who are interested can go through this uh, reference paper and see so what it has is a three term approximation for this uh, second order component of the limit state and in this proposal again because of these three term approximations it has three different components a1 a2 a3 and then it estimates the total uh, probability of failure as the summation of the contribution from these three individual terms i will show you the expression for these three terms in the next slide and once we estimate this probability of failure, you can evaluate beta corresponding to weight's proposal. Now the question is, what are these three components? So you can see on your screen. So the first one, again, it is the same Brightings formula and the A2 and A3, you can see the uh, two extra term in this estimation on your screen. Now again in this uh, lecture we are not going to derive this uh, in detail but uh, those who are interested can go through the um, article. For the time being once we estimate these three terms and if you carefully review all these three terms you will see what we have is the beta estimation from the first order reliability method and there are corrections due to the curvature kappa. So effectively, that's how the impact of curvature is uh, incorporated in this proposal also. However, this method is not valid if this condition is met. So uh, it does not work well for negative curvature. So that's the limitation of this model. Nevertheless, bright tung's algorithm actually gave us the first component. So the Wetz algorithm works like this. We first calculate the principal curvature as per Brightung's approximation and then calculate the failure probability using the uh, wedge model where we have three components A1, A2, A3. And the expression for this A1, A2, A3 are given on your screen. So let us quickly take an example. So in this case again the same cantilever beam uh, we start with this we solved earlier also even in the MATLAB code we just now solved this problem. So, again the algorithm goes in a similar way. We first uh, evaluate R0 matrix and then calculate R matrix, then estimate D matrix. Then once we have these two, we can first calculate Breitung's uh, PF. And then once we do that, we can find out the three components proposed by it. So over here you can see a1, A2, A3 estimated based on the principal curvature that we estimate from the A matrix. And the results are summarized here. So beta and PF coming from first order reliability method, SOM proposed by Breitung and SOM proposed by Wett. And in all three you can see from the first linear approximation how the estimation of beta changes as we consider the impact of non-linearity. So the curvature effect is there in the second order reliability model and that is visible from the numerical changes that we see in the estimation of reliability index. And obviously once we have the impact on this reliability index, it is bound to be reflected in the estimation of probability of failure and that's what you can see on your screen. So we have a direct comparison with Breitung's uh, model and the weights model and in this case again both of them estimates uh, 
very closely. So our second problem again is the cantilever beam. So we have this limit state. Again, this we have just now discussed using MATLAB code. So the first order results you can see on your screen. And then we continue the same methodology. So we start with the R0 matrix, then we construct R matrix, then capital D matrix, and finally A matrix. And once we find out this A matrix, we can evaluate the principal curvature. And then immediately we estimate uh, PF as per Brightung. And then uh, reliability index. Once we do that, then we can find out A1, A2, A3 as proposed by Bet, and the results you can see on your screen. And finally, we sum these three up. So A1 plus A2 plus A3 gives us the estimation of probability of failure as per Bet. The results are again summarized in this table. So first order reliability method gives an estimate of uh, beta which is 4.2823. Then we have Breitung's correction which is 4.2808 and finally Bet's model gives us 4.2807. And corresponding probability of failure also you can see from first order reliability method it is 9.2506 into 10 to the power minus 6 which is then uh, in Breitung's model 9.3127 into 10 to the power minus 6 and finally in Wedge's proposal it is 9.3159 into 10 to the power minus 6. So that's how the logic goes. So the third problem where we have significant nonlinearity. So in this problem we have the gx as x1 square plus x2 square minus 18 and x1, x2 are random variables following normal distributions with sample mean 10 and sample variance 5 and then uh, for this problem again the results from first order reliability analysis is you can see on your screen so beta is 1.9799 and we also have alpha 1 alpha 2 and the design point which is 3 3 so for this problem again we construct the rotational matrix and then capital d matrix and then finally we get the capital a matrix and once we do that, we can estimate the principal curvature you can see on your screen. So the principal curvature in this case, K1 or kappa 1 is 1.1785. And then we can estimate PF Brightung, which is in this case 0 0.0131. Now using this information, we can calculate this uh, weights proposal. So A1, A2 and A3. For all three, we have the numerical values on your screen. And then uh, we sum them up to estimate the probability of failure as per Wett's proposal and then finally beta Wett. And this, all these results are summarized here. So beta form is 1.9799. Then from Brightung we get it 2.2242 and from Wett we get it 2.4, sorry 2.2452. So we can easily see the impact of curvature on the estimation of reliability index and corresponding probability of failure. In this case, probability of failure for first order reliability method is 0 0.0239. From Breitung it is 0 0.0131 and from Wet it is 0 0.0124. So, another problem where we increase the nonlinearity just to check how these models work. So gx is x1 to the power 5 plus x2 to the power 5 minus 18 and the properties of the random variables are kept same. So in this case again we estimate beta alpha 1 alpha 2 and finally the design point that you can see on your screen. For this problem again we follow the same route we estimate capital R matrix, capital D matrix and capital A matrix. And once we have this capital A matrix, finally we estimate the principal curvature, which is in this case 1.3416. And then Breitung's estimation of probability of failure is 0 0.0630. So once we have that, we can calculate the three components in the Wett's model A1, A2, A3, and that you can see uh, on your screen. And if we sum them up, we get the estimation of probability of failure as per Wett. In this case, it is 
0.0575. So the complete result you can again see on your screen. So from form, the reliability index is 1.2626. The same from Brightung is 1.5303 and the same from wet is 1.5762. And you can also notice how the nonlinearity of the limit state is going to affect the estimation of reliability index. And corresponding probability of failure from first order reliability method is 0 0.10337, while the same from Brightung is 0 0.0630, and from weight it is 0 0.0575. So that's how this complete algorithm works for weight. And uh, we in, again investigate whether for the linear limit state, it estimates the same as proposed by first order reliability method so that we just cross verify. So in this case, we have GX as 3X1 minus 2X2 and X1 following normal distribution with mean 16.5 and standard deviation 2.54. X2 is following log normal distribution with sample mean 18.5 and sample standard deviation 2.80. It has a covariance between X1 and X2 and which is 2. For that again we solve the first order reliability problem where we have beta is equal to 1.9799. Alpha 1, alpha 2 are there on your screen and then X1 and X2 are 13.5. 347 and 20.021. So all these values you can cross verify with the MATLAB code you have already from our previous lecture. Now once we evaluate uh, alpha 1, alpha 2, we can construct uh, first R0 matrix and then R matrix and then in this case capital D matrix is 0 simply because we have a linear limit state. Obviously the second derivative will be always 0. So the a matrix is also 0 here and obviously in this case three estimations for which model A1, A2, A3 you can see on your screen and because the first estimation comes from Brightung's approximation so obviously we have that non-zero estimate for A1, A2, A3 is 0 simply because we have a linear limit state in this case. So finally we get the probability of failure as per weight that you can see on your screen and the complete result is summarized here and in this case you can see estimate of reliability index beta is exactly same in all three models first order reliability method second order as proposed by Brightung and then finally wet in all three cases it is 1.5998 and corresponding probability of failure for obvious reason are also same and it is in this case 0.0548 the reason behind this uh, value is that the limit state is linear. Obviously, in this case, first order reliability method is accurate enough to give us uh, estimation of reliability index and probability of failure. So, just by looking at the alpha values, if we can uh, estimate the curvature, then from that value we can see whether the estimation of first order reliability method is going to be affected or not. So if you have a highly nonlinear limit state and in that case we have already seen from previous examples that Brightung and Wett's proposal actually works and can accurately estimate the effect of curvature. Obviously, as we progress in this course, we are going to confirm whether these estimates are correct or not. That, in, in, in fact, in the next module, we are going to discuss simulation-based reliability methods and there we will verify whether this estimate of beta and corresponding probability of failure are accurate or not. Nevertheless, these uh, two models, one proposed by Brightung, another proposed by Wade gives us some idea how we can incorporate the effect of curvature and introduce some corrections over the first order reliability method. And we have seen that if you have a nonlinear limit state, how the curvature affects the overall estimation for obvious reason. And once we estimate this curvature, how to evaluate the more accurate probability of failure as per second order reliability method. So, 
before we conclude, uh, let me just quickly show you the MATLAB code where we have already implemented this. So in this some new code, this function file has the last part where we actually calculate the three components of the weights model. So these, these three estimations you can see on your screen, IN1, IN2, IN3 actually gives us the estimate for uh, probability of failure as per weights model. So that's how uh, this logic is implemented. But again, in this case, first we have to solve the problem using first order reliability method. And then once we have that, we first solve using Breitung's proposal. And then uh, once we have that, we can extend it for Bet's estimation. Let me quickly show you the results that we get in this case. So here is the result for the cantilever beam problem. Now, in this case, it is uh, here is the cantilever beam problem. So, let us quickly check the results. So, we change the limit state number to 8 and then run it again. So, here you can see at the end of this estimation, we have beta as per weight and which is 5.0701 and the corresponding probability of failure is 1.9877 into 10 to the power minus 7 that you can see uh, we have for this cantilever beam. Now, for the second case, if we quickly review, so this rectangular RC beam, the result was here in this table, for that again we change the limit state number, so it is actually 8, no sorry, it is actually 6, so we have to change the problem number, so we bring it back to 6 and then run it. Again in this case you can see the estimation of beta as per which model is 4.2807. And the probability of failure in this case is 3 point, sorry, 9.3159 into 10 to the power minus 6. So that gives you clear idea how to develop the MATLAB code and solve this uh, second order reliability problem. Now, before I conclude, uh, let me give you some suggestions. So these are some of the books and particularly the literatures that we discussed in these two lectures on second order reliability method. So I will encourage you to go through these literatures to learn more about second order reliability problems. And of course, we'll have assignment. So you go through those assignments and if you have any doubt, please let us know. Then we will uh, clear your doubts further. So with that, let us close here. Our sixth, sorry, seventh module comes to an end. Thank you very much. And in the next class, uh, we will see how simulation based reliability works. Thank you. So, with that, let us conclude our discussion on uh, second order reliability methods. In the next module, we will discuss simulation based reliability methods and how we can apply them for. Uh, real life problems. So, let us conclude here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.